Hi, I'm Luke Timmerman, a biotech journalist here at the Bioinvestor Forum in San Francisco with uh, Nick Leshley, the CEO of Bluebird Bio, uh, one of the early members of the IPO class of 2013. I think it was about 16 months ago that you went public, yeah. and there have been more than 100 companies that have come public since. Um, so I have to ask Nick, what's this experience been like for your company? Has this been as wonderful as is often portrayed, <laughs> or uh, do you have your moments when you, you feel like it might be better to be a private company? Well, I think you always have your moments, but on the whole, it's been great. And now, admittedly, it's been a great time, right? There wouldn't be a company, uh, hundred companies public if it wasn't a great time. And part of it is, I think it's, it's you're getting so many more people engaged with lots of different ideas that are really exciting. I think genuinely speaking, the reason you've seen so many companies, particularly in our space, I mean, Bloomberg is one of many examples where the science is just really heading towards a translational moment that's meaningful. And so I think that's made my personal experience and I think Bluebird's experience public a very good one. Uh, I got nothing bad to say as a matter of fact one of the big upsides or concerns walking in people are like oh no you're gonna have lots of people asking you questions lots of people engaging and setting expectations that actually I view as a positive because all of a sudden you have people who are amazing at pattern recognition and I'm a one first time CEO hopefully not one time CEO but maybe first time at least uh -huh. They've seen a lot of these things before. And so I think we learn a tremendous amount just by what people are asking us, what they're focusing on. Personally, our trick and what we're trying to do is still sort of go to our own drum. Despite all the questions, perspectives, we have to take a three, five, 10 year horizon. And so doing that in the face of the public pressures, that's the challenge. And but so far, so good. You've gotten a lot of money, of course, by being public. And what that has enabled you to do some unusual things for a development stage biotech company. Yeah. For one, you were able to acquire somebody else, yeah. Pregenin. So can you tell us a little bit about what you got there and why it fits strategically into what you're doing at Bluebird? Yeah, I think it comes down to how you define gene therapy, the space that we're in. And yeah, it is a little unusual and our board had a lot of discussions. Wait a minute, you're, you're not looking to do a deal, you're not looking to do that, you're looking to maybe acquire something. And part of the fundamental rationale for that was we think this genome editing, which is the nature of this company, Bergenin, which now we call Bluebird West, is a, another way or another version of really specific gene therapy. And we think that's a key part to our long-term platform. And so how it integrates with what we do, which is a sort of a slightly different version of gene therapy that's a little less directed and maybe more permanent in nature, whereas an editing tool like this can manipulate the DNA in another fashion. So when we looked at those two together, we thought rather than go do a deal in this target or this specific area where we have to almost really be able to predict the future, we said it'd be much better if we integrate this into our fundamental capabilities and actually make it a key part of our right tool strategy for the right diseases that was the rationale for doing it and we had an opportunity with this fabulous small group out in Seattle that had done some really inspirational work hasn't been very well recognized because it's quite difficult and technical and so we said this was an opportunity and we had a this is where having a stock price helps you can use your equity to make what we think forward-looking uh, moves like that and so far it's been received very well and internally it's been great now this rising tide in the industry the last year has uh, enabled a lot of companies to raise money including competitors of yours in gene therapy and cell therapy, um, a few well-known ones in CAR-T immunotherapy, yep. going after CD19 antigen, yep. things like that. Ha ha have any of those developments encouraged you to, or convinced you that you maybe need to stop doing some of your uh, the things that you had on your list a year or two ago? No, I think if anything, it's emboldened us. I think I've always used the analogy, it's not a terribly sophisticated one, but saying, you know, one gas station on the street always makes you kind of nervous, right? But multiple gas stations, it brings the tide up. And in this case, we didn't want to be the only gene therapy player on the street. We knew we weren't going to be the only oncology player with using, as you were referencing, the car technology on the street. So, no, I think these are going to be very large spaces with lots of opportunity. And having more players in is great for patients. It's great for the investment community. It's great for partners who want to come in and help. So all all that helps everybody. Now obviously we have to carve out what we think is our niche, if you will, and our products, and I'm pretty confident that we'll do that over time. We have a great partner in Celgene in the particular area that you're referencing in the context of, of oncology. And so, you know, it's step by step and it's all going to come down to data and the products. Hype is all interesting, but it's really who can deliver at the end of the day. Now, a lot of what you guys do happens behind the scenes. Investors are not aware of. Mm -hmm. What's one thing that you've done in the last year as a public company that maybe didn't catch people's attention? 
that was actually important for your company long term? Well, there's, I think you're right. A lot of things go on uh, inside a company uh, because you have to, we have to make a bunch of moves. Ideally, if someone's telling us on the outside to do something, arguably you'd say, well, that was your business. You kind of should have figured it out. So I think some of the moves that will become apparent over the next 6, 12, 18 months will become uh, more evident. I mean, hiring a, a gentleman like Rick Morgan out of the NIH, who is sort of the, the really the, uh, certainly a, a very strong uh, perspective with the NIH lab with um, uh, Steve Rosen. That's a powerful move. They're not meant to necessarily figure it out, right? Think about it. he's at the heart of our oncology program. It's those types of moves where we have to sort of be predictive of who's going to lead our change, and then just you got to go for it. And I think so. Those are those are the types of things. A lot of people-oriented moves, uh -huh. and then the strategic moves. We have to be six, twelve, eighteen months ahead of what expectations would be. Otherwise, we're not really doing our job. And so, how do you fund that? That's my job. And then, how do you have the guts to go do it? That's uh, our entire team's job. Right? One last quick question: yeah. How worried are you about pricing? Uh, whether somebody out there in gene therapy um, overreaches and uh, spoils the well for everybody else. Yeah. I, I'm not too worried in that sense because it's going to come down to the value that these products contribute. And I think that conversation as more and more products is going to have, a, it's going to, I think, bring more and more people to that table. Are there going to be mistakes or people who want to maybe push it in a certain direction? Yeah, but it's not just a gene therapy question. I mean, these are cures questions, right? So there are other products out there that are potentially curing. That, that dialogue is going to get complicated, but everyone's incentive to come to the table because you're curing. You're getting really, these are highly impactful treatments, and we'll figure out as a business how to make it work. So we're spending a lot of time thinking about it, but at the end of the day, it's only going to be relevant if you can bring that product forward, and we'll sort it out. I'm pretty confident about that. All right. Thanks, Nick. Right. Thanks, Thanks for Luke. being here. All right. Take care.